Hi, this is Jared from Shuno, and today I want to do a quick introduction to my Shunome Open Template version 20 for AutoCAD 20. Uh, if you've used my previous templates, this one is going to feel very comfortable and very familiar to you, but I thought it'd be nice to do a short video and talk about some of the changes and some of the improvements. So first off, when you start a new project with the template, you're going to go File, New, uh, you're going to use Template, you're going to select Shunome Open Template version 20. If you don't see it there, go browse for Template, find where you saved it on your hard drive, and then you're good to go. So, when you start a new file using my template, this is the first thing you're going to see. It's just uh, some tips, some advice on how to use the template. I'm going to talk about using parameter transfer, uh, links to getting the ArchiCAD 20 US library if you don't use that, and some other things which you can use your eyes and you can read that. So you're going to look at that, you're going to be good. You can close that. The next thing that's going to show up is my advice on project startup. So I wrote a blog post a couple months ago with all these tips and talks about it in much more detail, but you can go through these when you start the project and just make sure you're doing everything so, update the template, project info, title block, blah, blah, blah. Um, when you do it, you can select, say you've updated the template, you select that square, you change it from foreground to background, and that's going to show up black. It's a little pedantic, but the idea is if you go through and do all this stuff on day one or day two, it's going to be, you know, set, and you're not going to kind of mess up the system that I've created. So for instance, let's talk about project info and title block. Project info is file info project info. Now if you look in here, there's a bunch of things, project name, or I should say there's a bunch of things that already have some text filled out. If you go through and replace this text with the actual things like the area of the site, the zoning type, if you have county records for the site, Put that URL, URL in there, just so you can find it easily. Legal description, you get all this stuff out of the way now, it's going to make permitting easier later. Now, full house address, you put all that in there. You add your contact info, and your client info, just because our, this is a great place to store it in Archicad. So you go ahead and you do all that. What that will mean is by the time you get over to here, to the title block, and you put your company logo there, if you filled out the info the project info, all this contact, phone number, contact web, all this stuff, this is all just going to populate. It's going to be good to go. So, let's say we've gone through this, you can read through the rest, do them. Now we're actually to the project, or to the, you know, to the template itself. And I've taken the idea from the previous version of my template that had a sample project, and I've gone a step farther and made like a little 20 by 20 building with a bit more stuff in there. And the reason is you can now look at this and see a little bit more of my advice for modeling and how I put stuff together, but it's also going to allow you to better see what's happening in the template. For instance, if we look at uh, my model view options and we just cycle through what the different versions look, now there's enough of a building in there for you to see the changes. So you can basically just go through and start exploring what my overrides are, and you have a building in there to help you understand uh, what the differences are. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, I've got a bunch of views set up, so in the project map, the framework for uh, residential project is, is all open to that. Um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about here? Um, under visualization, I think this is something kind of cool. I've created one view, uh, which is a white model, um, and the idea is you go through and model setbacks and other uh, kind of invisible forces which um, will inform your model design or your building design. So maybe it's a setback, maybe it's an important sun angle or a view or whatever. Invisible stuff that you want to think about and remember, you drop it there. Um, 
here's a generic perspective to get you going. Um, some of the stuff with graphic overrides, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to use them. So some of the things I've done are important to creating documentation like grayscale, uniform line weight, hidden zones, crochet, but other stuff I'm just looking at how we can use graphic overrides to highlight um, interior versus exterior or structural versus non-structural elements. Again, I don't necessarily need this stuff for my day-to-day -day work, but I'm starting to think about how we can use them so I'm incorporating them into the template. Um, let's see. I'll show you a structural plan real quick. Um, so here's structural plan. Uh, I've done some interesting things with graphic overrides. I've removed some pen sets, so now I basically have my pen sets with colored hatches and with uh, grayscale hatches. That's it. There's no more um, grayscale pen set because we can do a graphic override that has, let's see, grayscale. That will take all the elements that are not on layers that start with five vertical line or six vertical line and turn them all gray. Because if we go to my layers, we can see that structural, mechanical, electrical are those sets of layers. So everything else turns gray. It's like a really slick solution. Um, what that does, and it's a way to think about doing graphic overrides, is that graphic overrides allows us to start thinking about some element types in ARCHICAD to be, uh, to have their pens and fills defined by layer instead of by element. So another graphic override I've set up is, uh, let's go to edit rules, is furniture uniform. So what I've done is all elements that are on layers that contain the word furniture or um, contains this layer name, my trees one, uh, will have their lines, their fills, and their pens overridden to be uh, gray and uh, empty, or a background fill, so basically no fill. What's great about that is it means when you are placing furniture, the kind of entourage in a model, you don't have to worry about any of the graphics. They're all going to default to uh, it's going to gray. So if you're going to the object tool and you're looking for, say, a couch, uh, it doesn't matter what couch you're picking, you can just say, okay, that one, hit okay, as long as it's on the right layer, you put it in, it's already going to show up you know, graphically right. So you can skip that aspect of furniture and you just know it's going to be good. Um, see anything else I want to cover. I think that's probably enough. This video is already getting pretty long, but um, template is ready for everyone to use. I'm sure we're going to find lots of things to improve it over the next year, um, but there it is. So I want to say thanks everyone who supported it in the past. I'm excited to share it uh, for ARCHICAD 20, and I'm uh, looking forward to trying this out on a real project and seeing how I want to tweak it. So thank you very much.